guys, it's Harley. Today I'm here to show you how I transfer my water propagations into soil. I know it can be really stressful to move plant cuttings into soil because you don't want them to die and it can be stressful on the plant, it can be stressful on us. It's just stressful all around, but it doesn't have to be as stressful as we're making it up to be. So hopefully this video helps give you some confidence to do that. And yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, so I do have quite a few water propagations here. Um, so I'm just gonna show you some of our root systems really quick. Here I have some Syngonium cuttings. Like, look at how long that root is. Lots and lots of roots. This one I actually water propagated and then I put it in soil and then I decided I wanted to keep it in water a little bit longer because I'm going to use it in my aquarium when I when it gets to that. Uh, but yeah, there's all of that. I have a little Umbrella Schefflera variegated one cutting um, that's just barely starting to form roots. It's really cute. It has a lot of really small new growth on there. So I think it's happy. I'm going to leave this one in soil a little bit longer. What I look for in plants that I'm um, getting ready to propagate into soil is like proportional looking root growth. So like these all have proportional root growth. So if I wanted to pot them up, I could. This one doesn't. So like for this plant, I would wait till the roots got to be like three or four inches long. Um, here's some Benjamina. This one's not ready, but these ones do have some significant roots that look proportional to the plant. Yeah, it looks like these roots will be able to keep these alive. I do try to wait until my plants have three to four inch root growth, like I stated before, just to be safe, you know, better safe than sorry. Something else to consider when you're taking cuttings is you want to take multiple cuttings because not every time is your plant cutting going to survive once it's transferred to soil or even in the water. At any point, the cutting can definitely die, so it's not a guaranteed thing by any means. Just try to take multiple cuttings. Like my Benjamina, I took three cuttings and only two of them have rooted. I did pull out um, a cutting off of a pink Syngonium as well as a variegated Syngonium that died. Here I have some lipstick cuttings that now have roots, but some of them did die. Like it's just going to happen. So the more cuttings you can take, the better your odds are of getting a healthy plant in the end. And if multiple cuttings survive, you can pot them up together and have a more full looking plant. I'm going to repot the two of these that have significant roots. So I'm actually going to leave them in there. Okay, so I'm going to fill in the bottom, probably two, three inches with soil because this pot is quite a bit bigger than the roots on my plant i'm using black gold potting soil i've had a lot of people ask me why i use a more expensive potting soil as opposed to like miracle grow or something else you can find at um, normal supermarkets and stuff and the reason is black gold mixes in worm poop with their soil so it's a natural fertilizer for the plants they love it it's really really good for them and a lot of the other brands of soil do use like chemically fertilizers which in my opinion they're not as great just from like trial and error with my other plants i've noticed that my plants in black gold do a lot better and i think it's the worm poop that makes all the difference as opposed to chemicals just something to keep in mind so i am using two parts black gold all-purpose potting soil mixed with one one part orchid bark and one part perlite. This is a really good mixture for plants you're moving from water to soil, mostly because it's airy. So your plants are going to have a little bit of a reduction of oxygen flow. I mean, in the water, there's a lot of oxygen in there. And when you're moving them into the soil, it can be constricting on them a little bit. So I do like to use a really, really airy soil. And at the beginning, I like the airy soil because I can water it almost every day to kind of ease the plant into my home environment in the soil, if that makes sense. I know a lot of people will also like, they will gradually add soil to the water. So if you're trying to transplant a more rare cutting from water to soil, then I would recommend you gradually every so often add in like a tablespoon or however much of soil to your water so that it's more of an easy transition for the plant. Definitely if you're like propagating a monstera or like pink princess philodendron or some other super rare plant, you're going to want to do it uh, as easily on the plant because you can't afford to lose any cuttings if you know what I mean. Um, I'm kind of going to work the soil around the edges of the pot so that there's a little bit of a hole in the middle, a nice little pocket for the roots to sit in. Take out these roots. I do definitely like to wait as long as possible to repot, to move plants to soil. Um, I'm going to put these ones together. I think that that's some pretty adequate root, root growth. Something else to consider is if you're using like a miracle grow or something like that, the fertilizer can burn the delicate root systems that have been forming in the water. It definitely is beneficial in my opinion to use a more like organic, natural, um, less chemically potting mix. But I know that there's a lot of debate in the 
plant community over basically everything. So what works for me may not work for other people. That's just something to keep in mind. And if you have a different system for doing this, please leave a comment down below. I say this in every video, but it's because it's really nice to hear from other people the way they prefer, the methods they prefer. It just gives more options to people. And then depending on what environment each person is living in, it can make all the difference, you know? So then I'm going to tap the soil so that it fills in any pockets around the root systems. This is probably the easiest kind of ficus, at least that I have in my collection anyway. It's so easy, it grows so fast. I started rooting this just before Christmas and the root systems, they took a long time to form actually, but once they were formed, they've grown super quickly, which is nice. It's fun to watch um, root growth, you know? That's why I prefer water propagation as opposed to soil propagation, but it is just a person to person kind of thing. I don't think that there's really like a super wrong way to do it, just whatever you enjoy more. Okay, and then I'm actually, once I have the plant in the soil, I think that looks really cute. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to take the water that it was in and just pour a little bit in there. I like to keep the soil moist in the beginning, which is why I really prefer the super airy mix. I mean, I don't know. I'm not like a scientist or whatever, but in my thoughts, it seems easier on the plant roots if you keep the soil moist to begin with. Um, I have had propagations die from, I think it looked like they burned up and the roots just turned to a crisp because it was too much of a shock to be put into the dry soil. I really, I'm so happy. I've been really looking forward to potting these guys up into actual soil. I overwatered it a bit, but that is fine. Should I repot something else? I think I'm going to. Let me go grab another pot. Okay, I'm gonna move this one to the side. I think now I'm going to pot up this mystery plant I have that I got from a plant sw swap a while ago. I think somebody told me that this is the plant that cocaine is made out of, but that could be wrong. I just keep telling people that what that's what it is. I've had this plant for so long in water and the roots are really small. The roots seem to be kind of thicker than most other plant root systems. I'm going to give them a lot of extra sunlight. My mom recently repotted her cutting of this plant and it has grown like crazy since she put it in soil. So I'm going to take that as the sign that I should do the same. I do like putting orchid bark just at the bottom of the pot to help keep soil from falling through the drainage hole. I know a lot of people put like mesh, I don't know, little pieces of material. I don't know what people put at the bottom, but I just like having a natural material down there to help stop whatever soil from coming out of it. That's just me though. You prefer to do, you go ahead and do. You don't have to do it how other people say you need to do it because at the end of the day, nobody is a 100% expert on anything. It's just kind of trial and error, especially for hobbyists. Um, I'm going to only put a few inches at the bottom. Maybe I filled it up to like right here with soil because I want more of the stem to be in there. I want like it to be far down in the pot so that it can kind of anchor itself. Oh, this is going to be so cute. I like how it's really bendy and weird. And then just fill it in. I will definitely update you guys on these plants in the future just so that you can see that they do survive and you don't have to stress as much. But I know how stressful it can be, especially more rare cuttings or like meaningful cuttings. <laughs> I know this is a humidity loving plant because it is from Costa Rica. So I'm going to try to keep it really well watered. I need to like prop it up with something. I'm just gonna use a chopstick to help prop the plant up because he's kind of leggy. <laughs> if I go to, out to eat, I my friends and family and I often go out to eat pho and they give me chopsticks, but I'm not talented enough to use chopsticks to eat anything, let, an, uh, let alone pho. I can barely eat that with a spoon. <laughs> I'll keep the chopsticks and use them to stake down my plants. And then I'm just gonna use some um, macrame rope, cord stuff, a little piece of it to tie it in place until his roots fill in the pot a little bit more and he's able to stand on his own. That's where um, waiting until your roots are proportionate to your plant and can support the plant really, really comes in handy. Like I said, I've had this guy in water for so long and the roots have stayed the same size for a very long time. So I just feel it's time, see what happens. So yeah, there is that plant, but I do really, really love propagating plants. I mean, that's one of the funnest parts about owning plants. Wouldn't you agree? Is taking cuttings and being able to make new plants out of, well, plants. So here are the two plants I repotted. I'm excited to watch them grow. I'm going to general rule of thumb. I like to give my plants that I've moved into soil a bit more sun than I have been when they were in water just to help give them some extra energy to really thrive in the soil. And then once I feel that they're up to where they need to be growth wise and I'm 
feel comfortable moving them back to their normal light requirements, I'll do that. That being said, don't give them too much extra light. Like you don't want them to burn. It's just kind of a guessing game or a trial and error kind of a thing. Let me know what you thought of this video. Like I said, if you have any extra tips, please leave them in the comments down below. Myself as well as other people will really, really appreciate your input and advice. You're all so much smarter than I am. So I really, really love reading through all of your comments. Uh, so yeah, that is it for this video. Let me know what you thought. And if you have any other video requests, please leave them in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.